Hi, we're here today to talk about using and modifying page templates. My name is Brenda Field and I'm the yearbook advisor at Glenbrook South High School in Glenview, Illinois. I'm in my 25th year of advising and I've certainly learned a thing or two over the course of that time about how to make the process more efficient and more effective for both beginners and veterans. I will say that no matter your level of experience, a layout like this, a blank spread, can be kind of intimidating. How do I take something like that and make it look sophisticated and polished and professional, and then how can I do that across an entire book? Well, templates can really help solve that problem. I can very easily take what's on the left and create something like what's on the right through using just a few simple tools, and once I have that basic foundation, I can go back in and make some adjustments according to the content that I have to include. So templates are worth considering because they will certainly save you valuable time. And then that time can be better invested in things like stronger coverage, or maybe just going in and refining the finishing touches on your layouts so that things look more professional and polished and more cohesive within the book as a whole. Another thing I really enjoy and appreciate about templates is that they can provide a more accessible entry point for beginners. If someone isn't having to design an entire layout from scratch and maybe just focusing on a module or a quick read or some portion of the layout and not the entire layout as a whole, then they can still have an opportunity to contribute and still learn some things about design. And then lastly, I think templates can be really helpful when students aren't necessarily able to work together side by side because they can make it easier to keep things looking cohesive. So all of those things are reasons to consider using templates, but when you do use them, you still need to remember the basics. You still need to make sure that all of the decisions about design are still being guided by the content. So when I say content, I mean the photos that are being taken, the stories that are being written, the captions that go along with those photos, those things, and then also, again, would be like alternative coverage, things like that. All of that is the content. So that needs to drive what's happening with the design. So I need to be willing to go in and make adjustments to my template as the content changes. I never want to be putting a square peg in a round hole. So I need to be making adjustments to make sure my eye is still looking at things in the right order, that my eye still understands which things go together, which things don't. Bottom line, I need to be willing and ready and able to make adjustments. But the good news is that's really easy to do. So I can start with a spread like this, and let's just imagine that I'm going to use a, a page surfer template through Yearbook Avenue. So I just went in and I grabbed this one, this is from the Unseen series within Yearbook Avenue. So I just added this. And imagine, if you will, that I have a photo that is facing to the right. Currently, I've got a dominant photo where the eyes in the photo should be leading to the content on the left. That's basic design principle. I want the eyes in my photo to kind of be leading me to the verbal content. So really I need a dominant photo that's on the other side of the page and content that's on the other side of the page. So I can quickly and easily do this whether I'm using Monarch or I'm using Layout Pro. In Monarch, I would just go in and use Page Enhancer and you can see here that I can flip this layout from left to right, top to bottom, I can even rotate it 180 degrees. Same thing could easily be done using Layout Pro. In Layout Pro, I use mirror, and in this case, I would mirror it horizontally so that I have a photo that is now on the right-hand side of the page. So that's just one easy fix. I can also go in and modify this template so that it looks a bit more like my book. Maybe my staff has decided to use certain colors, certain typefaces, Nothing that's in the page surfers has to stay as is. So I can go in and I can change the color. I can add this outline type. I can make my headline a lot bigger. And then again, depending on my content, I can flip it from top to bottom. I can make adjustments. All of this is really quick and easy to do, not just with Page Enhancer, but even just if I'm going in and, and clicking around and moving things, you can see here that I'm just going to take this content. I'm going to delete some of it. I'm going to move it around put some captions in a slightly different place. And you can see all of this really doesn't take much, if any, time at all. It's super efficient, and this is what templates allow you to do. So I'm going to add in another photo down here. 
and then add a caption. And I'm going to swap out another section for a pie chart. And again, you can start to see what I was talking about at the beginning. This is efficient, it's effective, and it's approachable for anyone on staff. So bottom line, no matter what, whenever you're using templates, you still want to remember the basics. You want to let the content drive the design, but don't hesitate to play around and to make those templates look unique to your school and to personalize them with all those things that are part of your personal toolkit or your set of cool tools, as it were. Don't hesitate also to take a look in the digital classroom. There are lots of really great resources in there, including things about how to use these principles that I've alluded to in making these templates your own and taking that foundation and making it something that is really unique to your school and particularly emphasizes the content first. So take a look, use what you know, and make some design magic.